Okay, this is P.3 day two. A lot of square roots and what to do with them. And also rational exponents, which means your exponent is a fraction. Here's the assignment. <coughs> Rationalize the denominator. Um, well, basically when you have a square root here, um, that is not proper f uh, format for a fraction. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of that square root. So the way that we do that is we take the square root and we multiply on the top and the bottom of the fraction with that square root. So here we get 5 root 3. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is just 3. Um, we would do the same thing over here, but first we can simplify the square root of 12. The square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which would be 7 over 2 root 3. So that when we actually multiply, we're not using the 2. We don't need to use the 2. We're all, we're, all we're doing is using the root, which is our root 3, just as with um, example 1. So. That would be 7 root 3 over 2 times square root of 9, which is 3, so 2 times 3. Okay, so we get 7 root 3 over 6. Okay, now how do we um, achieve this when we have the sum of a whole number and a radical? Well, we use something called the conjugate. Conjugate. Okay, it's very simple. If you have 4 plus the square root of 5, the conjugate is 4 minus the square root of 5. You simply change it from a sum to a difference. Or, if this was a difference, you change it to a sum. So, this is the conjugate of what I've been given here. And we use it in the same way that we did up here. We simply take that number and we multiply it on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to multiply the top by 4 minus root 5 and the bottom by 4 minus root 5. And I just kind of start multiplying things together. So for example, top, we just multiply 8 across the, using the distributive property. So I get 32 minus 8 root 5. On the bottom, I'm going to foil this out. So I'm going to think of this as a binomial times a binomial, right? So first gives me 16. Outer gives me negative root uh, negative 4 root 5, inner gives me positive 4 root 5, and last gives me negative square root of 25. <clears throat> so I get 32 minus 8 root 5 over, these two are going to cancel, positive uh, 4 root 5 and negative 4 root 5, they cancel each other out, so I just get 16 minus square root of 25 is 5. Now. What I could do at this point is just be very careful with all the terms that I have. Um, 11 is a prime number, however, if it was not a prime number, I'd, I might want to factor the top back apart into what I had originally, 8 times the quantity 4 minus root 5, because at this point I could look at the 8 and the 11 and say, hey, can I reduce this? You can't reduce it over here, but you could reduce it here if it was factored. Now it turns out we don't need to do this because those don't reduce, so we can simply take this answer. Alright, number four. Um, probably haven't seen cube roots for a while, or fifth roots for that matter, but um, they're not as hard as you might think. Uh, there aren't very many of them, so that makes it easy. For example, eight is two cubed and 8 goes into 40, that's going to be a very common one. So if I break apart 40 into 8 times 5, I can take the cube root of 8, which is 2, and simplify that just to be a whole number. And basically that's all we're trying to do when we simplify, is get part of it into whole number status. Um, this one, again, when we have a cube root of a fraction, we can take the cube root of the top part separately from the cube root of the bottom part. Cube root of 125 is 5, cube root of 27 is 3. Bingo, bangle, we're done. Um, this one, it's kind of tricky. You actually want to combine them back together. So if you multiply them together, you get the fifth root of 64. 
and then you can break it back apart. It's a little tricky. So uh, fifth roots, hardly ever see them, but it turns out that two to the fifth power is 32, which is a factor of 64. Two times 32 is 64. So the fifth root of 32 is two, and then the fifth root of two separately. This one is very similar to what we did with the square roots. We're going to try to break it apart into pieces. The cube root of 27, where did we see that? Right here. Um, 27 is a factor of 81. Oops, cube root 3. Cube root of 3 obviously is too small to be broken down. But here we have the cube root of 27, which is 3. This part right here is just a 3. A lot of 3's in this example, I apologize. So I have 3 times 3, which is 9, times the cube root of 3, minus 4 times the cube root of 3. And now we have a matching term set, which can be subtracted to be 5 cube root of 3. <coughs> I've written down all the cube roots and fifth roots right there on the side of my paper, if you want to copy that down. Hit pause now. And then the last page. Um, whenever you have something raised to the one half, that's basically just saying the square root. So 25 to the one half is just the square root of 25. Likewise, anything raised to the one third is just the cube root of something. Cube root of eight is two. Just be careful if something is negative in the front, you have to keep it negative in the front. So this is the negative of the fourth root of 81. You may know that 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81, yes. Therefore the fourth root of 81 is 3, so you just keep that little negative in the front, so your final answer is the negative of 3, or negative 3. <coughs> if the negative is inside parentheses, that's different. Inside the parentheses means we have to keep it inside the root. So one third is a cube root, but it's going to be the cube root of a negative eight. Now, while we cannot take the square root of negative numbers, we can take the cube root of negative numbers. Because a negative times a negative times a negative is another negative. So what number times itself times itself is negative eight? The answer is negative two. When the fraction is negative, do you remember what happens here? It means that this whole thing is on the wrong side of a fraction. So we move the entire 27 to the 1 third power, making it positive 1 third. Onto the bottom part of the fraction, we need a placeholder up here of 1. And then we can go ahead and say that that is the cube root of 27 down there on the bottom, which is just 3. The last ones are the hardest ones. We have. Um, 27 to the 4 thirds, um, 4 to the 3 halves, and 32 to the negative 2 fifths, which will be on the other video.